Um, hello everyone, welcome to the Go class. My name is Stephanie and we have another instructor here and uh, Mr. Filippo, would you like to say hi to everyone? Hello everyone, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna be your Go teachers today. So before we're gonna learning the basic rules of Go, I have a very short but very interesting story to share with you guys. So are you ready? All right. Once upon a time, a father who is the best Go player in the world wanted to teach his son named Akira how to play Go. As you can see the picture, that's the father and the son. One sunny afternoon, the father finally find a time and sat with his son across from a Go board. And now Akira asked, what is the game of Go? And the father replied, Go is the oldest board game. It started 4,000 years ago in China. If you are younger than 10 years old, Go is 400 older than you. So back then, the United States has not even been discovered yet. So now you can see how old Go is. And Akira asked again, what does Go look like? This is what a Go boards and stones look like. And uh, there are two players taking black and white stones. The player with a black stone goes first. So each player starts from the empty Go board and he takes turns to put down the stones on the board. So once you put down the stones on the board, you can never move it or replace it or take it back. It stays there permanently. All right, and then the, te uh, the, the father continued, Go is easy, but super complicated. The reason why Go is easy is because it only has a three rules, that's it. So we're gonna talk about these rules very shortly. The reason why Go is super complicated is because as you can see in the picture, each move generates a lot of different moves, different variations. So the total possibilities in Go are more than the total atoms in the universe. So we don't know exactly how many atoms we have in the observable universe, but we know it's a lot. But the total possibilities in Go is way more than the total atoms in the universe. That's why Go has millions of strategies and it's kind of super, uh, super complicated. All right, and then Akira asked again, why should I learn Go? Why are you teaching me this game? And the father replied, it's because not only learning Go can help you math, but also your reasoning, your logical reasoning. In other words, it will make you smarter. So besides this, he, con he continued, it will help you creativity. So Go board is like your own universe. We have a 361 intersection points on the board. So I will show you the Go board later. So if you imagine, if you consider the intersection points on the Go board as a starts, it has many, many options. So we have to be very creative to design the good shapes on the board and then make all of your stones useful on the board in order to win. And then the father continued again, besides that, you're the real leader in Go. It's unlike other board game, all of the pieces have uh, specific ways to move, like chess. Protecting king is the only way to win. That's the, uh, the most important thing to, for, for you to win a game. But in Go, everyone starts from the empty board and each stone is, has equal value. So you're the commander, you're the only commander and leader to decide where your soldier and your stones to go. So you get to decide. All right, and then the last reason, but not the least, Go board is usually four times bigger than other board games. Um, then we're gonna talk about later, um, how big the Go board is. So making less mistakes will have higher chance to win a game. So we have to be patient, focused, and calm from the beginning of the game until the end. And now Akira asks again, if I manage to do all of these things, would I be a good player? And the father said, yes, close, but not quite. So the last thing we have to learn is in Go games, you can barely see a draw. So in other games, you probably will see win, lose, and draw, that's tie. But in Go games, there's no tie, there's no draw. So in my 20 year, 20 year playing experience, it never happened to me. So the result will be always winning or losing. 
So we should never give up on the difficulties because not everyone can win all the time. We will lose some games, but don't give up and we will learn from our own lost games. So be humble in the victory, but not discouraged in a loss. All right, and then now Akira asked again. He said, yes, I can do it. Then am I able to improve and join the tournaments? What do you think? What do you think what the father said? And the father said, yes, now it's time for you to join the tournament and other events. So if you guys can see on the screen, that's all the tournaments we have. We have a different local tournaments. We have a national tournaments. So all of the tournaments, including the local tournaments, are organized by American Go Association. So as you can see, we have a ranking competition, US ranking competition, that's New York division. Uh, that's the tournament you can rank up. So all those certificates are issued by American Go Association as well. All right, and then the father continued, uh, besides the tournaments and events you can join, then you can also join the New York Go Honor Society and learn from all of our honorary presidents. So if you can see all the honorary presidents are from the best, best schools. They're from MIT, Princeton, Harvard, Cornell, and Yale. So you're gonna have a lot of fun learning from them. All right, and now the father said, good luck Akira, you will have a lot of fun in learning Go. So hope you guys like the, like the story. So now are you ready to learn the rules? All right, so I said there are only three rules, right? Very easy, All right? The first rule is called the territory. So in order to, the ultimate goal of this game is to conquer or to surround the territory. Or you can say as land. If you surround the, the, the space on the board, that's the total land you have. So to fight, to capture is not necessary and, unless you have to. It's unlike other board games, you have to capture your opponent's king or you have to capture your opponent pieces in order to win. But in Go games, fight and capture is not necessary. As long as you surround more territory or more land on the board, you're winning. So as you can see on the board, all the triangle spaces are surrounded by black stones and all the white uh, square spaces are surrounded by white. So at the end of the game, we're gonna count uh, all the surrounded spaces that are surrounded by both black and white stones. So whoever has the most territory points wins. So that's the first rule. So now let's go back to the go board. So usually we have a different, uh, we have a three different size of a board. The nine by nine, that's the smallest one and the 13 by 13. And then eventually the standard go board is 19 by 19. The reason why we call the 19 by 19, 13 by 13, nine by nine is because we have uh, 19 horizontal lines and 19 vertical lines. That's why we call the board as 19 by 19. And, but uh, the nine by nine and 13 by 13 are not a standard go board. So if you wanna join any tournament in the future, then every game has to be played on the 19 by 19 board. So usually we start from the nine by nine board as a beginner, but since today, uh, we're gonna just jump to the 19 by 19 in order to be more familiar with the actual goal board. All right, so how do we win? The first rule is to surround the territory on the board. So black goes first, and white goes next. It takes turns to put down the stones on the board. So once you put down the stones on the board, you can take it back, you can move it, if you say, no, I, I regret to put the stones here, I want to take it back. No, that's against the rule. You can't do that. So once you put the stones down on the board, it stays there permanently. All right. So how do we win this game? Let's say if I surround the top right corner, each, surround, each surrounded space is considered as your point. So we also count the first line, the first line here, the edges, we also count the edges. So in that case, black surrounded 12 points. So if white surround this corner by using same amount of stones. So black used the seven stones here. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. And white also used seven stones in the top left corner. And how many stone, how many points does white surround? Can anyone answer that question? Or anyone would like to answer that question? This is your volunteer uh, opportunity. So if you want to answer that, raise your hand. I just oh, put everybody's hand people. down. Yeah. Or Linda, all right. Okay. Linda, go ahead. Okay. Um, nine? Yeah, it is nine, very good. So each surrounded intersection point is the, it's the territory or the land. So white surrounded nine points, black surrounded 12 points by using same amount of stones. Then who is better? Then of course, is, is black is better, right? So that's why I mentioned we have to be very creative in this game because different shapes will give a different result. So in the top right corner, I used my seven stones, but I surrounded 12 points. But white used also seven stones, but only surrounded nine points. So in that situation, the shape of black stones is better. All right, that's the first rule. So after we surround all the empty spaces on the board, then we're going to count. Whoever has the most points wins this game. All right, then let's go back to the second rule. Uh, how can I put this on the right side? Okay, so the second rule is called capture. I think you guys can see the board here. All right, so conquer the territory is the most important, but sometimes the fight will, um, will happen in your game. So for example, if I'm trying to surround my territory, I'd say I'm, sur I'm trying to surround my territory in the top right corner. Just assume the game is played like this. Now, what do you think? Who is controlling more space on the board? Black or white? Anyone who wants to answer this question? Okay. Cecilia. Black. Yes, black, right? Because white only controlling uh, the line up to the fourth line or maybe fifth line, but black is controlling all the way to the tenth line here. So of course, black now is leading the board. So in that situation, if white is simply surround the territory like this, white is not going to win this game. So now the fight will start, which is a mid game. So white now has to find a way to get into the Black's territory, for example. I can try to invade. And then the second rule, fight, will happen in your game. So each game, each stone, any stone played on the board has the liberty. So what does liberty mean? So you can, uh, you can consider liberty as the road for the stone to escape. So now I can use the mark to show you. I can make the board a little bit bigger for you guys to see it. All right, so all the triangle, all the triangle marks are the liberties of this black stone. So if I use all the white stones to surround that black stone and see what's gonna happen. Oh, the stone disappeared, right? So that means this black stone is captured. That's the only way you can remove the stone from the board. Once you play, once you put, uh, once you put down the stone on the board, you can you can't take it unless you capture your opponent's stone. Yes. All right. So now I have a question. If I have a black stone in the middle, now we know there are four liberties around this black stone. Then how about the tr uh, the diagonal direction? All the squares, are the squares also the liberties of this black stone? Uh, anyone who answered the question? Perry. Uh, so uh, the squares are not liberties because they're diagonal. Mm, okay, very good. Yeah, excellent. So if we consider the liberty as the road, all the squares do not have the line between the stones. 
If I put the white stones right here, there's no line between the black stones and white stone. So all the squares are not the liberties. All right, so we already know one stone have a four liberties. Then what if now I have a two stones? I have a two black stones right here. And how many liberty does the two stones have? Della. How many liberties? Four, five, or six. Right. I heard four, five, or six. And which one? Six. Six. Mm, okay, let's try it. All right. Is this the liberty? Yes. Yes. Is this the liberty? Yep. Okay. Is this the liberty? Yes. Mm, this one? Yes. This one? Yes. How about this one? No. No, because there's no line between these two oh, okay. terms. Right, the triangle and the square, they don't have any line, so that's not a liberty. So where is the last one? And you can also tell me the coordinate. We have A, B, C on the top and 19, 18, 17 on the left side. And where is the last liberty of the two black stones? All right, please pick me, I picked you. C16. C16, very good. So after you block the last liberty of any stones on the board, you capture them, all right? So once you capture it, make sure you're gonna take all of your stones with you and put it on your side. Because at the end of the game, we're counting the total territory or total land you surround plus the stones you capture. All right, if you forgot to take them, that means you lose your point. All right, so then the third rule, It's called illegal points. So in, in Go games, there's no restriction to go on the board. You can go anywhere you want. You're the boss, you're the commander, you're the leader. But there's only one place called illegal point and you can never play. All right, so where is the illegal point? Uh, so before we're going to talk about illegal point, I have a question about you, to you guys. What's the most important thing for you to do to keep the stones alive on the board? We're not talking about uh, we're not talking about winning a game. We're talking about how do we keep the stones alive? How do we avoid uh, from capturing? Anyone? Edward. Hmm? Hmm? Could you say it one more time? I didn't hear that. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Now, what do okay. you think? Well, we, we can't give it gas. Mm, mm, like, block them? Yeah, we, we have to try to avoid uh, from your opponent to block them, right? Then what, what's the name of that, that blocking move called? Do you remember? Mm. Mm, I don't. Okay, it's okay. It's called that liberty. Right? Oh. Or, or you can, um, in Chinese, it's called qi, means air. So if we don't have any oxygen or air on the earth, uh, it's very hard for, for anything to, to live. Right? Maybe that's not a good example, but uh, if liberty is too hard to remember, I know that word is not that easy to remember, then you can, you can call it as air. So if the stone doesn't have any air on the board, it will, it will get captured. Uh -huh. All right. So now let's talk about illegal point. All right, so now white has a four stones in the center and black says, since I, the rule says I can go anywhere I want, then I want to play A here. Is that okay? Anyone would, would like to answer this question? Cecilia? Um, yes. Yes, okay. 
All right, and do we have our different answers? Linda Lynn. Um, no, it can't no. go there because mm -hmm. um, it's the round, no, no air. Right, so it is not allowed to play at A. It's because if one goes A, so if I want to play A here in my computer, it doesn't allow me to go here. See, I put in my mouse here and it doesn't allow because that's illegal point. So every stone needs to have air to be alive on the board. If that spot doesn't have any air left, that empty or that surrounded spot is called the illegal point. Because after, as soon as black plays there, it gets self-captured, right? So we, we can't go there. No, 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 no. Right. Then I will give you another example. So now Black says, I know A is illegal point because all of my ears are blocked by white. Then I wanna try B. Can I go to B? Is B okay? Yes. Yes, all right. So if Black goes to move B, how many more heirs does that stone have? Daniel. One. One, right. So it is still okay to play there uh, because that's not against rule. So if we play the move into a legal point, that's against rule. So uh, we can't do that. But if we play at B, that's okay. But is that a smart move? Is it a good move? Derek. Uh, no. No, because Black doesn't play that move. Now it's White's turn and White can capture the stone immediately, right? Okay, so now if there's Black stones there already and now Black says, I wanna go to A again. Now can I do that? Cheese. Oh, uh, no. No, why not? Um, because if you go there, it'll get instantly captured. Mm, very good, because all of the, uh, the airs are blocked. So these are the airs are blocking the two black stones. Okay, very, very good. All right, so now are you ready for more challenging questions? All right, since we're just talking about illegal points. Now I have another question. Very similar question to the illegal point we just talked about. Except we have some more stones on the outside. So now we know A is the illegal point. We can never play into the illegal point. So what's gonna happen if we play the illegal point? Um, so we have a very strict rules um, to play into a illegal point. So in the tournament, if any player play the move into a illegal point, not only you will lose that stone, so let's say I played into an illegal point at A. So now I'll have to take that stone and then pass this stone to my, to my uh, opponent. That means my opponent get a free point. And plus, I lose my turn. So that's why illegal point is very important. All right. <clears throat> so now we know move A is illegal point. Then how about B? The two questions look very similar, but it's a little different. Right? So we have uh, three black stones on the right side. So is it the same thing? Is it B also considered as an illegal point? Aiden. Uh, 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 I, 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 the presentation, I, I saw it was named Ko. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Because uh, that is a illegal point if there were, were black ones, but then if you except for the white ones, mm -hmm. you okay. go there, you would capture it. But then if you go into B, you will, you will get captured. But 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 then white one get captured. Okay, 
So the answer is, is that an illegal point? Yes or no? Uh, you, you got a point. It is called co, but we haven't, oh, we haven't talked about co yet. Yeah, but we're getting there. We're getting there. But my question was, is be okay to play? So, no? Did you say no? Oh, okay, I'm, I lost him. All right, uh, anyone have a different answer? Yeah, you Victor can John. put it on B. Uh, yes, you can play at B, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen if, we, if I play the Blackstone into B. So if I move the stone here, see, I can't, if I put in my mouse here, it doesn't show a black move. But if I put in my mouse in at B, it has a black stone there, then I can capture this white stone, right? The reason why B is not an illegal point is because this white stone only has one air left. So once you block the last air, what's gonna happen to that stone? You capture it, right? So uh, according to the rules, capture always goes first. So as long as you can capture, then you can play there. Because after you capture white stones right there, you're, you're getting one more liberty, one more air for your own stone. So that's not gonna be an illegal point anymore. But I think, uh, uh, I don't remember his name, but uh, one of the students mentioned a co. So that's a co situation, excellent. That, that is called co. So what is a co? K-O. It's called KO. Um, I have a better name for this situation. It's called the endless capture. It won't end because white now can put it here to capture again, and white now, uh, black now can capture again, right? So then it will keep on going. We can never finish this game. We can never finish this situation. So how do we how do we end the KO? How do we end the endless capture? And then there is a special rule to end the, the co-situation. It is called, oops, it is called a co-threat. So when a co happens in the game, uh, whoever captures it first, the second player cannot capture the stone back immediately. So which means if black captured this white stones first, now white cannot capture this black stone immediately back. So we have to play a co-threat, which means exchange move anywhere on the board. You can play the exchange move here. As long as your opponent responds to you, and then you can capture this stone back. The same rules apply to black as well. So we can capture the co-stone immediately back. We have to wait for the next turn. But of course, when you play a move, um, anywhere on the board, now black has an option, whether I can respond to your move here or I can end the code by connecting here. So that black has the two options to do it. All right, um, now I have another question for you guys. So, so we just talk about code situation. All right, let me set up a very similar example as the one on the top. All right, so we already, ate, we already know A and B are the illegal points. What if black now has, oops, black now has more stones on the right side? Is C still illegal point? Okay, let me, let's pick a different person to answer. Um, Darren, have you answered any question yet? All right. Uh, how do I, uh, how do I pick? Okay, Cao Cao, you go ahead. Oh. Uh, I think C is not illegal. Mm, 
That's correct. Excellent. So, but why? Because both the black and white in the middle will, but both of the the piece you placed on C will stay alive. But both the white one to the right of it and the black one to the left of it will be captured. Uh, but both both uh, black and white cannot be captured at the same time. It won't but happen. Once you put it on C. The black piece to the left of it has no air. Mm, but uh, okay, um, that's correct. First of all, your answer is correct. All right. Uh, so let me give you an example to answer your question. So let's say I have uh, one stone at one here. So if I add another stone, does it mean my stone one is dead or is it captured? Or, or that means the two black stones are connected. My two stones are connected. And now I have actually three more heirs right here. So these two black stones are considered connected. So if black goes here at C, the, this stone on the left side is not captured because the, the stone at one is connecting with the stone two. So the both stones still have a one liberty left. So C is not an illegal point. All right, but my question, my ne next question is, since we talk about Ko, right? So everyone, uh, the first, okay. since the first player capture Ko first, and White now cannot capture the circle stone back immediately. White has to wait for the next turn. But my question would be, after Black captures at C, since these two stones, A1 and 2, only has one liberty left at circle, at A, can white play at A to capture? Or do I have to wait for the next turn? All right, anyone? No. Right, Tera, you're up. No. no? That means uh, you don't have to wait for the next turn, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, that's correct. But why? Why would I have to wait for the next co uh, next turn in co situation, but not in uh, the question on the right side? All right. So the answer is the reason why we have to wait for the next next turn in code situation is because we're trying to avoid the repeat. If we don't wait for the next turn, then black captures one stone, white captures next, and it will keep on going. But if we capture at C right now, after white captures again, and black captures this white stone again, now there's no repeat. It's done. The capture finished at the third move. As long as there is no repeat, it is okay to capture, to recapture the stone. So in co-situation, both players only capture one stone repeatedly. So if you're capturing more than one stone, it can be co-situation. So then you don't have to wait for the next turn. All right, so I think we covered all the rules already. And now are you ready to start your first game? Or do you have any questions? So there are only three rules. Territory surrounding the most land uh, in order to win this game. Or if your opponent started the fight, then you know how to capture your opponent's stones. And the third rule is we should never play our stone into an illegal point. That's it. See, go is pretty easy, right? So uh, if you like to start your game, I still uh, suggest you, uh, recommend you to play on the nine by nine board first, right here, mm, because it's easier to see the different moves. That's a 13 by 13. So nine by nine board is like this. It's pretty much a chess board. Yeah, but uh, in Go games, we play the stones on the intersection point. We're not playing the stone on the squares. Right, so in total, you have 81 intersection points that you can play. So after you feel more comfortable to play on the smaller board, then you can jump to the 9, 13 by 13. All right, so I think um, you guys can start the game after today's lesson, or unless you have any questions for me.
All right, anyone have the questions? Hello, I'm going to unmute, I'm the co-host. I'm going to unmute the person who raised the hands. Okay. Uh, Danielle? Okay, you close. All right. Um, Is there any questions or are we good? Kathy, you raise your hand and your turn now. You can, is your question? Yes. Um, can you place two stones at one turn? Oh no, every turn you can only play one move at a time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good question. I have a question. Yes. Is um, Go similar to chess? Um, it's totally different game. So by looking at the board, is it does it look similar to you? No. <laughs> no, this right? Chess is pretty hard. And uh, so no, it's not pretty hard. The rules is only three. How is it hard? No, I said chess is kind of hard. Uh, yeah, the rules of a chess is more, it has more rules, but Go only has a three rules. But after you learn the rules, then you will have a, a different strategies because the board is much bigger. Then of course, we have to use a different strategies. Then the strategies will be much, much more than chess. Okay. Okay. All right, any more questions? Okay, how many questions we can have for now? We have a couple raised hands here. Mm -hmm. Let's take uh, let's take three questions. Three, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Kao Kao or Chao Chao? Uh, Sorry, yeah. that's your name. Uh, yeah. What are the basic tactics and strategies of Go? Because I feel like if I just play, I'm gonna lose that. I'm gonna lose bad because I don't have any strategy in the game. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, that's a very good question. Okay, uh, since we just started learning this game, um, I have uh, two pieces of good advice for you guys. All right, in order to protect your stones, it's better to connect. So let's say uh, right now is to start attacking you, right? So one of the best way to keep your stones alive is to connect. You don't want to get caught by your opponent because now, if uh, I don't connect my stone, the stone with the triangle only has a three liberties. One, two, three. Right? The stone with the square also has three liberties. But after I connect my two stones, now the three stones are connected, then I'm getting more, a lot of more liberties. So instead of three for each stone on the board, now I'm having six. Right? So it's is a safer, is a stronger. At the, on the contrary, if you want to attack your opponent's stones, let's say black didn't connect, and now it's white's turn, and after white cuts here, then black only has a two liberties on the left and two liberties on the right. So cutting is a good way to attack your opponent's stones. Connecting is a good way to protect yourself. But of course, we will have a lot of more strategies to capture more to capture your opponent's stones more easily, but uh, because of time, we can go over with all the strategies or techniques right now. That's why I suggest you guys to play on the nine by nine board. It will be much easier. All right, next question. Uh, 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 who's gonna play first? Oh, uh, black. No, wait, who, who's going to play first in terms of not black and white? It's who's going to play first? Uh, whoever is taking Blackstone is going first. No, it's who. It's who. Um, it's, what do you mean by who? <laughs> the people. All right, so let's say you're, you want to play uh, this game against your friend, right? Uh, the, uh, what, so the... Mm, the official way to do it is called a nigiri. So the younger, the older people will grab a handful stone in your hand. Let's say you, you take uh, eight stones and you don't know the number of the stones you take. And the younger person is going to guess whether the, the numbers are odd or even. So let's say I guess it's, uh, it's even. 
So then you opened up, it's eight stones, and then it's an even number. So I guess it's correct, right? I guess it correctly, then I'm gonna take black. So if I guess it wrong, then I will play white. All right, that's the official way to determine the stones, to guess for the colors. Wait, I have a question. Yes. Uh, are you allowed to play on the edges? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but uh, good advice for playing on the edges, that's not a good start starting move because if black start from the edge, it only gives you three liberties. If you start from the corner, it only gives you two liberties. So if you start from uh, above the second or third line, at least you will have a four liberties. So it is safer to play, not to play from the edge. All right, um, I think uh, right now uh, the time is almost finished. And then I hope you guys enjoyed the Go class today. Then I'm happy to answer more questions. So if you have any questions, you can contact the teacher. Then I will try my best to answer all of your questions. All right, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, Xixie. Uh, okay, so um, for whoever is interested in joining the club, then feel free to ask your parents to, um, to see the information on the WeChat groups. We have all the information sent over there.